Okay, how to become faster in 5K. By the end of this video, I'm gonna give you five simple methods you can implement right now in order to become faster at your 5K. And I can tell you this with complete confidence because I went from not being able to run 400 meters to being able to do four sets of five kilometers in marathon training at 1640 per 5K. Okay, consistency. The key and fundamental thing of getting better at distance running or anything you're trying to improve at or improve the skill at is consistency. And the more we do something, the better we become at it, the better we become at it, the more we want to do it. And it's a beautiful triangle to be in. The way that you implement consistency is if you're running every day, great. If you're able to run every other day, brilliant. And if you're just getting into running, I'd highly suggest that you run every other day and take that middle day, that rest day, as just you going out there and walking and keep it simple and fun. The more fun you keep it, again, the more you want, you're want you gonna want to do it and you're back into that positive feedback loop again. But then with the consistency will come a bigger mileage, bigger volume, and then you'll be able to stack layers on top of that, including speed work, including long run, and then we can move towards a faster 5K. And that brings me nicely onto the next point, volume, mileage. The more you get out there, the more you run, the bigger your aerobic base. The bigger your aerobic base, again, the easier it is for you to stack the other layers on top and move towards running a much faster 5K. But you've got to start with the foundation. There's no skipping steps and quickly going on to running as fast as you possibly can for 100 meters, 200 meters without building the foundation really strong. Maybe it will work in the short term, but just watch how fast you plateau. out. So the mileage, will grow naturally as you're going out there consistently, but then gradually adding 10% per week and bringing it back every fourth week to give yourself a little bit of freshening up so that you can again move forward in the next four week cycle, strong, consistent, and you're still really enjoying your game. Once you've implemented that consistency, it's hardwired, you're getting out there on a regular basis and you're building gradually your mileage or your total volume, then you can start to add some speed work. So the interval training that we'll do for this is kind of pushes on massively when it comes to our 5K time. What we're essentially doing is breaking up a chunk of time into smaller segments so that we're able to run faster than we would at 5K pace. So when we go out there and run 5K, we're gonna be able to run faster than that because we're breaking it down into minutes, three minutes, five minute intervals. And that might look something initially like 20 times one minute with 60 seconds rest in between. And a progression from that might be seven times three minutes with 60 seconds rest in between. And then four times five minutes with 60 seconds rest in between. Why is it important to always keep 60 seconds rest? I like to keep 60 seconds rest because it keeps me on my toes and helps me to pace the total session of 20 minutes, but will also help you pace each individual rep. You will know that if we've got a five minute rep, but you've only got 60 seconds rest in between, that's gonna help you to pace that first rep, knowing that you've got another one just 60 seconds later, which is gonna feed much, much more efficiently and effectively into your 5K time. It also teaches you to get very, very quickly, get your breathing under control, and bring your heart rate from high during the rep to low when we're recovering. And a pro tip for you is to take those 60 seconds recoveries as seriously as you do the rep itself. Many of us will go out there and push during the rep because we understand that us working at speed, working at pace is going to affect the 5K time. To take the 60 seconds rest just as seriously, control your breathing so you're able to go again, pace the entire session and each individual rep, it's gonna make your way way faster 5k runner. The next is recovery. Again, if you give your recovery just as much importance, just as much significance in the week as you running fast or you running far or your overall total volume, you're going to start off on the right foot. And I'm not talking about ice baths and saunas and infrared techniques, all these different things. That's far down the line and a cherry on top and a nice to have. I'm talking about looking after your body before you run in terms of a warm up, so that you prime your body ready for the run, whether that's a recovery run or easy run, an interval session or a long run, you get your body and your, and your heart ready to manage what it's going to manage within that, that run that you've got scheduled for that day. 
also cooling down afterwards. If you speak to most runners, they don't have a cool down because they feel like maybe they finished a little bit easier on a long run and therefore they don't need to. So they go from high effort or relatively high effort to just getting in the car and driving home. That's not good for you on a long-term basis. You just get into the habit of spending five to 10 minutes on a cool down afterwards. It's gonna make you recover way faster. The next thing after that is to get something very, very quickly within 10 to 15 minutes into you. I love taking three to five bananas in a smoothie with almond milk, nuts and seeds, and getting that into me and having that prepared for when I'm finished with my run. Whether that's a recovery run or easy run, doesn't feel like I need it after those sessions, but I look after my body, act like a pro at all times, so that I'm able to keep the consistency over the days, weeks, and training schedule and even more important for the interval session when you've got probably the most muscle breakdown dependent on your sessions and the long run. When you're going far and the stimulus is, in, is not intensity but distance, very, very important with that muscle bre breakdown to quickly get something high carbohydrate into your body to restock your glycogen fuel. Now, I get asked this quite a lot because people are always looking for shortcuts. If you went out there and just ran fast once a week, you did an interval session once a week and ran long once a week and hit the stamina and endurance, would from those two stimulus, would you move forward? The answer is yes, you would move forward, but for a limited time and very quickly you'd hit a plateau. The reason for the recovery run and easy run is not just to build your aerobic capacity, but also bridge the gap from running fast and taking a lot out of your body to running far. And it's the recovery runs and easy runs and executing them easily enough and promoting recovery and pumping oxygen rich blood around the body that is able to give you the consistency over the weeks and months to hit the interval sessions and the long runs and really gain that super compensation. And the final point on recovery is with the warm up and the cool down, if you can get into the habit of having three to five minutes stretching, maybe you're already doing it and you're coming from the gym or you're coming from a yoga background, so important for longevity and so important again for consistency. The consistency, you're gonna increase your mileage. With the mileage, you can then implement interval training and you're gonna rock it forward and be able to run your fastest 5K. There's no doubt about it. But the only way that all of those things can happen is if you give the importance to the recovery, you give the importance to your fueling and hydration, and you give the importance to the warm up, the cool down, and your dynamic stretching before you run and the static stretching afterwards. Number five, the most important point for me, and for me, we're building somebody who's great in life and great in all aspects of their life when we're building a runner, is we're building mentality. If you build that work ethic that is getting out there and running, and doing the sessions, whether it's a recovery run, a fast session, or a long run, whether you feel one out of 10 or 10 out of 10, it just gets done because that's who you are, that's who you identify as, your whole life has improved, but definitely the running. And then you turn yourself into a continuous improvement machine. You're constantly moving forward, which again is putting you into that positive feedback loop. You're moving forward, you're improving, you're getting faster at your 5K, so you enjoy it more, you wanna do it more, and then you're analyzing your game. Maybe you're doing the intervals slightly different, maybe you're doing the long run slightly longer, and you're gradually building the volume of the week. But those five methods all stay true, no matter how long you're gonna be in this game for. So just to recap, whether you're brand new to running or you've been running for a while, if you just go out there every other day, don't really think about it, you just go out there and you build cardiovascular system, you build that aerobic capacity, you're going to move forward and you'll shave seconds or minutes off your 5K time. But is it optimal? No, there's an optimal way to do everything. And that would be to gradually increase the volume over the week, which only would happen through, through the consistency and then also to add in the interval session, which will make you a faster runner, make you more efficient at moving over the ground fast, which is very, very important. Then overall, what we're looking for is that improvement in mentality, that work ethic that gets us out there, whether we feel like it or not. And if you're the type of person who, if you're feeling terrible, but you look to a run, because you know that at the end of the run, you're gonna feel better than you did at the start of the run, you're in a magical place and you've only got improvement in front of you. Let me know in the comments below which one of those 
you most feel would be helpful to you? And which one are you missing out?